Hey guys and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to talk about the Fortran coding for kinematic hardening. Note that this is the part 2 of the procedure. So if you haven't watched the previous video, make sure you do so. First, let's have a concise review of the stress-stress relation for material with isotropic elasticity. As you can see it here, the stresses are connected to strains with a matrix which is called the material matrix. Lambda and G are the Lamez coefficients. Note that we are using epsilon instead of gammas. In other words, we are not using the engineering strains. Also, the deviatoric stresses are calculated using the mean stress. The mean stress is also calculated using only normal stresses. Now we can proceed to our plasticity calculations. We can rewrite the yield function like this. Therefore, the Mises predictor stress is calculated through the last equation. If the predictor stress becomes larger than the yield stress, then plasticity has occurred. Furthermore, we can calculate the equivalent plastic strain, the flow tensor, the back stress tensor, and the stress components. I've already explained these equations in the previous video. Before going any further, let's take a look at some important notes. If we software such as Abacus compute plasticity using the return mapping algorithm, it has the same concept as of our algorithm but more efficient. Don't worry, I will dedicate a video to this algorithm. If you are using the built-in model for plasticity, then Abacus uses German objective stress rate. If else, Abacus uses green nagdi stress rate. Generally, the results will not be the same. Also, there is no need for stress rotation since explicit analysis uses co-rotational framework. It means the basis system is rotating during analysis. Now, let's write the Fortran code for kinematic hardening. As always, I've already written the code to reduce time and focus on explaining. This is the VMAT interface that I copied from the Abacus documentation. Note that this VMAT is for plane strain problem. First, some parameters 0, 1, 2, 3, and 6, and some known constants E, poison ratio, yield stress, and a slope of plastic curve. Then, an elastic relation for the start of the analysis. This you can find in Abacus documentation. From here, the main part begins. First, we produce the elastic predictor. For this, we calculate the elastic stresses and the mean stress. And you can see it here. Then, the stresses are measured from the back stresses and the Mises predictor stress is calculated. Let me explain this part. We have four stresses in plain strain problems. Therefore, we will have four back stresses, which locate the center of the yield surface. To store these stresses, we use state old and state new. I use the normal and shear stresses to calculate the predictor. You can use the deviatoric stresses. If plasticity has occurred, we calculate the equivalent plastic strain, the flow tensor, and the updated alphas. State old is the alpha zero from previous step, and state new is the updated alphas. Finally, we calculate the new stress components. Also, if the material is in elastic range, the calculated elastic stresses will not change. As you have already seen, this view map is pretty simple and straightforward. Next, I will illustrate how we can use this view map in Abaco CAE and compare the results with the plasticity model that is built in in Abacus. 
I've prepared an example for illustrations. Here is the plain strain problem. Model 1 on the left uses the built-in plastic model and the other one uses the VUMAT which is written in the previous section. Let me show you the material properties for both models. As you can see it here, we used kinematic hardening with perfect plasticity. For the VUMAT, I've used the same configuration. Note that since we have used four states, we should specify the number four in depth bars. Also, this is a simple tensile test, as you can see it here, which is pretty simple and straightforward. Let's review the results. As you can see it here, the Mises stresses are completely the same. And if we compare the reaction forces for two models, we can see that the results are almost the same. This concludes our video. If you have found this video useful, please support me by liking and subscribing to my channel. Take care.